Welcome to Our College, Your Voices. I'm your host, Kara Monroe. Ivy Honors is the name of the college's honors program, which began in 2013. Since then, the program has provided hundreds of Ivy Tech students with extra advisement and other supports, and the results are positive in terms of student retention, graduation, and transfer success. I'm pleased to be joined by the honors team, including the advising staff and dean, as well as a current Ivy Honors student. Let's start by meeting all of our guests today. First is our Ivy Honors College Dean, Dr. Beth Borst. Hi, Beth. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Tell us a little bit more about what you do here at Ivy Tech. So I've worked at Ivy Tech about 15 years, and for the last, uh, well, since 2012 and, and, and 13, I've worked in the honors program as the founding dean. Was very fortunate to bring folks together to create a model for honors education for the college and to actually launch the first program. So it's great to be here. Very good. Welcome. And then we have three of our advisors with us. And the first up is Shahana Soper. Hi, Shahana. Hi, how are you? Okay. Tell us a little bit more about your job here at Ivy Tech and what brought you here. Oh, oh, and what brought me here? So mm-hmm. I am one of the Ivy Honors Advisors. Mm-hmm. I began here in about 2016 advising students in the program. Um, we have a events and orientations and, you know, a lot of different opportunities for the students in addition to the advisement. Mm -hmm. Um, What brought me to Ivy Tech was just that. When I found out about the honors opportunity here at Ivy Tech, I thought, hmm, it's different. Community college, honors Mm -hmm. program. So I wanted to see what it was about. Very good. And Brittany Horal. I have been an advisor with the honors program Ivy Tech for about four years in May. I can't believe it's been four years, but it has. Um, I work with advising students in the Indianapolis campus for honors, and as well, I travel to Lafayette and advise students in the cohort in Lafayette. Um, A little bit about what brought me here. I have a degree in counseling, so I did high school and middle school guidance counseling and then took a little break into mental health and wanted to get back into the academic side. So I decided to try out higher ed. Wonderful. Welcome. And Danielle Hart. Hi, Danielle. Hello, hello. And what brought you to Ivy Tech? And tell us a little bit more about what your specific role is here. Absolutely. So I am the honors advisor for um, the Northwest region, specifically Mm -hmm. the Lake County campus and then also Valparaiso. And so what brought me here to the college, Ivy Honors, was the opportunity to just be a part of a trailblazing opportunity. Like Shahana mentioned, like honors opportunity at a community college. Mm -hmm. What? So I was like, that's a really cool opportunity that I wanted to be able to help students take advantage of. So that's why I'm here. Very good. And we're always so excited when we have a student on the podcast. So our student is Jonathan Bontrager. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, how are you? Okay. Tell us a little bit more about what brought you to Ivy Tech and what you're studying here with us. So I graduated in May of 2018 and um, I just thought, you know, be a great way to, to save money, go to community college and be able to commute from home and all that. Um, so I'm really pleased to be here and be part of the honors program. And I've also found that, you know, more than just saving money, the convenience of being able to still study and be at home and also Mm -hmm. have some really great teachers. What are you studying, Jonathan? I'm studying biology. So I'm getting an associate's in biology and then hope to transfer after that. What's the story uh, behind honors education here at Ivy Tech? It's not always a normal thing to have honors college in community college, as we've sort of alluded to. What's the story? How did it come here? When Ivy Tech became a community college uh, back in 2005, I believe, um, there was a lot of banter at that point about how do we really program for for high ability students at the college. We've always had these students in our classrooms, but it was kind of the first time we really did something directed just for them. And so there was a lot of, of discussion during those years, and finally the time was right. The leadership decided it was time to, I, I like to say, kind of bookend Ivy Tech as a comprehensive community college. So in came um, the honors program and providing these, these opportunities in uh, advanced curriculum, Uh, to students, uh, transfer pathways, and providing, like folks have said here this morning, extra support and advisement and so forth. Jonathan, I'm going to direct the next question to start with you and then um, ask the team to build on that. You, I'm guessing, as a high-achieving student, you had many opportunities. What made you choose Ivy Tech? Hmm, I guess that's a good question. Um, I kind of had my mind made up, I think, when my homeschool group decided to have an event where there was a meeting at the Avon campus, actually, where we could learn more about Ivy Tech right. um, from the leaders there. They told us about the benefits of the program um, and even just the convenience of it. Like I said, being able to do it from home. 
and affordability. Um, I think one of the things I've been surprised about the most is I thought, oh, well, this is community college, you know, it'll be easier or maybe, you know, something like that. But I actually have like, you know, really good teachers and um, really good programs, small class size. So there's been a lot more perks than I've expected. But um, however I got here, I'm glad I'm here. Good. So that we get more students into the program, who who should apply for the program? So I always say that it should be students who are willing to to take ownership of their learning. Um, the other thing that I always like to talk about as well is because when I go into the high schools and I mention honors, people are like, oh, gosh, that's not me. And it's really an opportunity for students who would not have been considered honors because they weren't a part of the National mm-hmm. Honor Society to have that honors experience. We don't just look at GPA or SAT scores or ACT scores. We really look at the student as a whole um, Mm because we understand that when they go out into the workforce, that's what it's going to be about. You know, your employers are not just going to look at, you know, well, what degree did you have and what GPA did you have? They want to know, well, who you are as an individual. And that's what we really look for in students. So they got to be willing to put forth the effort then also understand that they don't have to be like the 4.0 students to come in. Like if they're willing to put in the work and the effort, we'll help them get there. Yeah, we think of this as an opportunity for both new students like Jonathan out of high school or perhaps a homeschooled uh, environment. And we're also happy to offer it to current students who Mm -hmm. come to Ivy Tech and like Danny said, may have not had some of the opportunities in high school. So we're delighted to to welcome them in. And just a note uh, that we operate this program, probably should have said that in the intro, but we operate this program on five campuses. So mm-hmm. we're in Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Lafayette, Valparaiso, Lake County. And on each campus is an admissions committee. And they are taking a look at all the applicants for honors on their campus. And uh, students are looked at holistically, but we certainly are looking for students who will go the extra mile and, like Danny said, are motivated. And I have had the privilege of attending your graduation event at the end of the year. And I will say having some connection to honors programs sort of around the state and other institutions, I respect and I love the diversity of our honors program, particularly in comparison to other programs I I observe. Uh, We have students of all nationalities. We have students of all races. We have students of all ages. And it's it's a really unique perspective on honors that you, I don't think you can replicate anywhere else other than here at Ivy Tech. So I really applaud you for that. You talked a little bit about how students are selected to join the program. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What do you mean when you look at the whole student? Maybe what does the committee do? How does the student apply? Tell us a little bit more about those details. So we look at standardized test scores. We look at SAT, ACT, or and or the Accuplacer, and we're really just making sure that they are ready to do honors level curriculum. The curriculum is, you know, everyone asks us and advisors, I guess I'm assuming you'll you'll hear this often as well, is it just harder? And my my answer is no, it's not harder, but it, we're looking at things in a different way. We're trying to get students to look at things more critically. Uh, most of our honors courses are flipped virtual, uh, lifetime classes, which is kind of a unique model at the college. And Jonathan, maybe you can share some of your, your experience in that. But what we're able to do is allow um, faculty to really engage with the students in conversation and dialogue. This may be happening more in some classes classes than others. But, you know, when we have an honors philosophy class or ethics class or um, English class, we're able to to really engage students in more dialogue. So it is an, an interesting piece to our program. And, and if I could ask Jonathan to maybe mm-hmm. speak to it a little bit, I think people are curious about that. Yeah. So I will say definitely it can be more engaging for sure. Smaller class sizes. Um, I know that the teachers that I have have always been really good at connecting with students and really accessible. Mm -hmm. And my first honors class was actually a calculus class. So maybe not the best model for for what you were talking (laughs) about, but I am in an English class this semester. So I definitely get a lot more of that student teacher interaction, interaction with other students and just a more well-rounded experience, class experience for sure. Well, and I know as we were getting ready to start recording, you said, I have class at noon. It's an mm-hmm. online class, but yeah. I have, I have to log in at that time. And right. because you're meeting face to face or you're meeting via video with your other instructor and students. And that's, that's a big difference for online education here at Ivy Tech. On the note of classes, uh, we also have a few um, honors only opportunities um, that students really tend to 
kind of brag about once they're done. HUMA 250 is, of course, it's a local travel study. Uh, when they go to New Harmony, Indiana, they have the opportunity to immerse themselves in the community, reflect on their time there, and bond as individuals. They oftentimes come back, you know, a little bit more chatty if we have them in class. I remember when I was teaching uh, IVYT 171 honors and I would I could always tell who went on that trip because they would come back and they just was I was like, well, it's brand new connections now in class. <laughs> uh, also, we have um, an opportunity for them to earn three honors credits by going on a biology 101 trip to Cumberland Falls, Kentucky. Again, same type of experience, great feedback, mm-hmm. bonding, but really getting into the biological experience uh, hands on there. Mm-hmm. And that's typically led by Dr. Al Rubenstein. So just wanted to speak on those couple of ops that the students have in addition to our uh, transfer seminar as well. So that's something that we go through students and really it is starting from research, best fit, what's going to be a good fit for you, going through college applications, recommending them to apply to at least six schools that are solid target and dream schools, and walking them through that process. Recommendation letters, how to leverage financial aid once they've been accepted to schools. Um, so those are other experiences uh, that they really get that are that's a little bit unique to, to the honors program here and that we tend to get pretty good feedback on from the students. So and it's really centered around their feedback too. That's something that I love about our program um, that we're able to get their feedback, respond to it and make changes as, as we see needed. And another thing I'll say, I know Shahana spoke to the bonds that students make on the trips, but um, since the courses are virtual and we have campuses around the state, the professors are also teaching courses around the state. So, for example, a student in Lafayette who may never have been to Chicago or have met any professors from Indianapolis, they're able to make those bonds with other students from different cities as well as professors. And that's just a really great networking opportunity for them. So why should a student consider applying to the program? You've hit on some of these, but let's give it to folks in a nice, concise manner. The first thing is they have plans to transfer to the baccalaureate. Um, Our program was never designed to simply get students to transfer to the four-year, but to succeed at the four-year. So we're prepping students uh, to do well at their their best fit school. Uh, So any student who's pursuing a transfer degree, and in our world, we know that as an AA or an AS or an AGS or an AFA, and someone, again, who wants to, to go the extra mile. So someone who would in, engage well in a virtual environment and also in a small classroom environment, we think that that is providing both flexibility and quality, quality curriculum and, and learning. So uh, I would say those are the key things. Why should students consider applying to the program? I would say I feel like the advising is is amazing. Um, When I think about like my advising experience, like I went to traditional four-year university, I was a number and I I didn't have the relationship that our students have with us as as advisors. So my my students have my cell phone number. Uh, We can meet face to face. We can meet virtually. um, But we're really student advocates. So I always tell students, like, even though our, our, our title is advisor, we're so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're your biggest cheerleader. Um, we support you and connect you with different resources. So when we know a student hasn't been in class, like, we know that, like, our faculty will reach out to us, especially in the beginning. If a student um, has missed court classes or aren't doing so well in the course, we can reach out to the student and come up with some plans of action to make sure that that doesn't become a deterrent to their success. So if that appeals to students in terms of having someone that will really help them be um, accountable and be a true leader, it's a great fit. That's usually my number one, my number one response as it pertains to joining the program. And it really comes from student feedback. I listen to the students after they've joined the program and they come in and they say, wow, okay. And it's advisement. And I hate saying that being an advisor, but <laughs> I'm literally uh, giving their feedback. And so that's, that's really awesome. But we kind of understand because we're, we're in a unique position to where we can wrap around the student, you know, and not many other advisors have that opportunity to do that. So we can see them in IVYT 171, meet with them on personal, academic, career, and transfer advisement, and go to fun experiences with them too. So it is an an added advantage, I think, in our position that we have that ability to wrap around the student. And I think that's why they tend to say, wow, I, you know, I just had a student actually who came in who's graduating 
met with her last week. And she said, you know what, although she's getting our certificate, which I don't think we've mentioned that yet, that students can earn an honors certificate or an honors diploma Mm -hmm. in the program. And she thought that she wasn't going to earn the certificate, but we calculated her credits and her GPA and she's fine and she's going to earn it. But at the beginning of the conversation, she said, you know, even if I don't earn the certificate, this has been worth it for the advisement and the attention that you've been able to give to me throughout. So I think that's a, definitely a top pick from a student perspective. We've talked a little bit about advising. So I'd like to know a little bit more about what the, what the student experience looks like. So Jonathan, would you tell us a little bit more about your personal experience with sure, the program? I'll do that. And actually, if I can just dovetail on what our Please. advisors just said, I totally agree with the advising being one of the, the top perks of being in the honors program. Since this is my first college experience, it's also my only one so far. And so I don't know, you know really what it's like to be just a number, but I have heard people talk about that. Um, at other colleges, and I haven't felt that way at all. I felt very supported. Brittany is, is my advisor, but then I've also gotten to know other advisors, Shahana and now um, Danielle. And so that is um, a huge benefit for sure. Perhaps, you know, the number one, having that personal interaction with your advisors. And the other thing is interaction with fellow students. Um, I'll run into other students in the honors lounge and in the honors lounge itself, I have to admit, that's actually one of my favorite parts because just having a nice little quiet place to study and, um, you know, meet other honors students, it's just, you know, a very nice perk as well. And then also the opportunities as an honors student that sort of go beyond, um, for instance, the MIHA, Mid-Eastern Honors Association Mm -hmm. Conference, we got to go to this past weekend was a blast. We got to meet um, students from colleges all around the state and even mm-hmm. Ohio and, and other states around Indiana. And then also I made, you know, great friendships through that trip and through, you know, fellow classmates and things like that. Where actually it's kind of funny, um, all the students that from Ivy Tech that were at the Honors Association conference, we're all in a group chat now. And so we were reminiscing on on the fun experience we had, sharing photos and and talking about our pets. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I made a lot of great friendships through the program as well. And it's just, it's very personal. So maybe that's the number one thing, if you really want to sum it up, both with the advisors and the fellow students, is it's a, it's a personal experience. The faculty who teach in this program are selected to teach in it. And um, I know we couldn't have a faculty member join us today, but can you talk a little bit more about the faculty support and the faculty wraparounds that you provide for this program as well? On behalf of the faculty, I would also argue that they're, they have an ability to also provide some extra wraparound services, if you will. Uh, their classes are small. And in fact, I remember one faculty member saying, you know, um, they're not all straight A's, but I can find these students. I can reach out and try to help these students. So it's a positive teaching and learning environment, and that's one thing that I'm very proud of in our program. Not only are we offering these kinds of opportunities, which I believe in some cases are pretty unique to our students, but we're also off- offering some opportunity for our faculty. And they work with their their uh, deans and chairs. Typically, a faculty member will teach uh, one honors course as part of their load, so we're not taxing taxing uh, schools for for their faculty, but we we are interested in talking to faculty who understand honors education and who attach to our mission. So, if a student is listening to this episode or a parent perhaps, and they want to apply or learn learn more, how can they do that? We have an Ivy Honors website. Um, it's www.ivytech.edu slash honors. On that website, you can see um, a lot of the benefits we've addressed, but also other components of the program. On the right-hand side, there is a link to you to where you can click to submit an application. It's not a terribly extensive application. Um, it's definitely feasible to do within 30 minutes or less. It's definitely something you guys should check out to see if the honors program is a good fit for you and the application, again, it's just right there online. Also, we have an email address and our contact information is on the website too, as far as advisors and deans, so you can contact us that way. On our website, we also have links to where you can register for Ivy Honors virtual info sessions. And what those are are led by advisors, and they last about an hour. We usually have three or four a month for students, parents, guidance counselors from high schools. Whoever really wants to learn more about the Honors Program can um, log in and join those info sessions and just get a more clear picture through a PowerPoint and ask questions they want to ask. On the note of, I know we've mentioned transfer a little bit earlier on as in, you know, the seminar and things we do in there. And I just started to think about some of our alumni 
And uh, actually, I think it was the week before, last week or the week before that, I reached out. And that's something, again, being a smaller program that we can kind of still connect to our students and check on them and see how it's going at the four-year school. And some of those who are now, I have Rabia, for instance, who's at the University of Massachusetts. Tell um, Rabia I said hi. She I worked in our office. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we, we have a couple more, but yeah, I, I certainly will. So she was excited, so excited to hear from us. And I told her that, you know, Dean Bohr says hi as well. But just to check in and, and still give them that added bit mm-hmm. of encouragement um, wherever they're at. Uh, checked in with Josh at Harvard. Mm-hmm. So he's in the program there studying business and It's going well. And even our local students here in Indiana, Manchester, um, Karina just checked on her. And, you know, she actually ended up receiving a presidential scholarship, which is great because she's on the medical route and she wants to go to med school. So she was able to get a full ride to Manchester. So um, we do like to check on our students who are out there after they leave us. We think that's an important part of uh, the student experience. It's, Mm -hmm. It's beyond their years here with us, too. We've talked about transfer as the ultimate goal. What does that look like for students and what are some of the success stories you have from them? Our transfer successes, I believe, are are great. And we are here as a team to support students no matter where they want to transfer to. If it's down the street or across the country, we're here to support that. The program is currently available at five others at five of our campuses. What are the plans for the future? We're very excited as a fairly new program to be pointing to the future at Ivy Tech. We believe having an honors program is good for the college, it's good for our students, it's good for our faculty, and we're super interested in expanding it. So we will be looking at other campuses, probably to the southern part of the state. We're kind of Indianapolis and on north. So uh, we're excited about possibly expanding this out to other students across the state. In each episode, we give you a call to action, and today's call to action is to engage with Ivy Honors. As Brittany said, you can attend a virtual info session to familiarize yourself with the program. Register for that on our website at www.ivytech.edu forward slash honors. We also have a way for you to refer a potential honor student by sending in names. We will link to that in our show notes. The the name is really, really long, um, but we will link to that in our show notes for you. And you can learn more about collegiate honors education at nchchonors.org forward slash hashtag home. And that's the National Collegiate Honors Council. That's their website. You can also contact the Ivy Honors team with any additional questions at ivyhonors at ivytech.edu. I'll spell that for you. It's I-V-Y-H-O-N-O-R-S at ivytech.edu. Instructions on accessing all of these resources will be in the show notes. Thank you again for joining this episode of Our College, Your Voices. I want to thank all the members of our panel, Dr. Beth Borst, who is the Dean of the Ivy Tech Honors College, our three honors advisors, Shahana Soper, Brittany Horrell, and Danielle Hart, and then our Ivy Honors student, Jonathan Bontrager. Jonathan, thank you again, and we know we're going to get you out of here on time to class. I'm your host, Kara Monroe. You can connect with me on Twitter at KNM Tweets. Our producer is Ann Penny Valentine. Anna's on Twitter at Indie Penny. And a special thanks to Beth for guest producing this episode. You can reach us by email at Our College Your Voices at ivytech.edu. You can also reach out if you have questions about honors or if you'd like to be featured in a future episode, uh, maybe one of our past honor students. You can reach out and leave us a voicemail at 317 572 5049. Again, that number is 317 317- 572-5049. Our website where all the show notes will be listed is ivytech.edu forward slash podcast. It's maintained by Tracy Allen. A thanks as always to Sarah DeWitt, Becky Campbell, and the Ivy Tech Community College marketing team for all of their help. Our podcast concept is by Matthew Pittman. Theme music, post-production services, and recording provided by Jen Eads at the Brassy Broadcasting Company. And we will see you next time on Our College, Your Voices. <laughs>